and it go. Yeah, you got me on hold here. <laughs> Hello? On hold. Walmart customer service representative, please. Yes, with, with whom am I speaking? Hello? What? <laughs> yes. Is this customer service? No. I'd like I'd like to speak with customer service, please. Well, I have a complaint about you, your manager you got there. A wrong number, Vinny. It's in a perfect world. Oh man, uh, I didn't know. I, I thought off. I had to. Oh, no. I'm, I'm on hold with these guys over here. Oh well, great. He's playing on the telephone. Anyway, tell him who we are and what we're doing here. Oh, I, I'm going to tell you what. In a perfect world, I wouldn't have to wait on hold for customer service. There'd be no need. But anyways, welcome to RealLibertyMedia.com. Okay. Hey, everybody. Grab your favorite medication. Uncle Vinny's going to talk to you. Okay, boys and girls, come on up and sit down. I've got a little story to tell you about Walmart. Hey, first, uh, do the intro to the thing and say hi to the bites and bodies. Well, there was these two guys, Flash and Vinny, and they walked into the bar, man. I tear at the top and Grimner and Moose Girl and Kate and DC back brackets. Asmo, uh, he'll do as you say so because he don't say nothing, does he? Every once in a while, Chalcedony, I be Don C, Java Doctor underscore two in high five. Master Brow, he's gone to work. There's some uh, Ponder Gander going and Rain and Rob works in Rome's. There's a Vanna White and a Vinny and a W4DKV Weatherdorp. Z best Z. And well, then. Hello, Circolo. Go back 101. And hello, honey. Hello, honey. Hey, Dakota. Dakota. Sure, you bet. You. Flash somebody. Yes. Bye -bye. Getting right on it, sir. Hey, sir, look at this. Grumpy. Grumpy too. Grommet JJ's 999 JJ's. I wonder what that stands for, you reckon? I don't really know. Well, Kozu, anyways, and Carl Marx and Kiss. Pound sauce and sock puck in a shell ammo. And there is a Ben Me fight. Very well, then. It's just the uh, duck decoy tossing them. <laughs> I got them all. I know. I to fill out know by now. No. Yeah, he sits there with the finger on the trigger. I got him. A ah, 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 ah. You doing your impression of Don C, you sneaky little Vincenzo. <laughs> I got a bullet, Andy. Cirque was having to explain all that because I'm not a duck killer like you. Really? I believe the ducks are actually the reason we are here. I can't believe that. Well, I've, I've shared the pictures of these dangerous critters. Everywhere duck. I go, people feed the ducks the wrong food, but they feed them. They love the ducks. What do they feed? What's the wrong food? Well, you should never feed them bread. The bread we eat is bad enough for us, but you shouldn't feed it to the birds. What does it do to them? It makes them, depends on the bird, but it's not good for their system. I bet and it makes they, them put. They eat things like um, seeds and rice. Right, right, not rice. What rice blows them up to. I I read really? pigeons blew up because they was eating the rice. I don't, it's a good story. Herb. I like a good story. People say, don't throw rice. We're here the... for the ducks. Just face no. it, Vince. No, nothing happens to a bird that eats rice. They grind it up in their little gizzards. No, okay, well, I know it's not good for them to eat bread, but well, rice I wasn't sure of. But seeds, a... they, they sell shit for them. The it's more a natural bar. foods. Because when you start feeding animals what we eat, we usually shorten their lifespan considerably. Well, we feed our animals the same stuff that we butcher and then consume from the grocery store. So what's well, the difference? Depend well, I say I'm not really feed. Sure. 
depends on what your source of it's just like gas you know for a car depends on your source of fuel because there is the real premium shit that works and there's the kind of shitty stuff that works kind of shitty but it's affordable yeah you know and that's how we have such a massive population is because of the uh the mega agriculture and and they've concentrated it so when all that when all that takes a dump they might have a great famine of uh 20 uh, uh 2020 really nobody could you are, it are you coming. predicting a famine for the world no yeah one day absolutely i don't i'm not saying next year but um, are you selling squares in a pool or anything? You know, does this thing pay no, off? <laughs> no, no payoff. Just, no. Uh, well, off comes of being prepared. Now you need to. Yeah, there's that phone call. Uh, I was talking. Uh, he's talking to the people on uh, the phone. Let me, I'll be right back. I'll talk to you later. Anyway, that was uh, Vince playing around with his son in a perfect world tonight. And I think he has stuff to do. If he doesn't, he'll be back. We'll see what happens. But in the meantime, what have we got on going in, in a perfect world? Let me look at what see what we talked about here last time when we gathered the greatest thinking minds of the 19th century. And it was swell, too, let me tell you. Uh, what was Vinny here last week? I got to look it up. I can't remember. I did a dork table with Mary Saturday in it. It takes me a while to recover from one of those episodes. Well, let's see what it did me and Vincent do on In a Perfect World the last time we In a Perfect World did. Okay, there's uh, 20%. Well, I noted that one. Okay, what yeah. happened? Wait, wait, wait. Ah, last week we discussed role models and yeah. arose by any other name. Hmm. Yeah. That came from uh, the title, ro uh, Role Models, came from you and Arose by any other name I adapted from uh, anti. So are you, what, what's going on with you now? Are you taking over the world again or what? Mm, no. no. I'm making a, I'm making a wagon though. A hand, hand cart wagon. Oh, you're making excuses not to write so you can finish your project on time for Friday. Got it. Oh no, I'm no. recast my, uh, yeah, my, what matters worldwide. I started in 2013. Uh, <laughs> Was, yeah, yeah. I'm brief, they're not archives so I'm going to put them all in, uh, because I plan on being outside for the pretty weather I was outside a while oh, ago the pretty weather wow yes. you well, sound like my wife Finny. so I make I need soil and so across the road there's like some old piles that I have to get in there and chop out and dig uh, I'm not sure how fertile they are but when they built the road hmm. or when they come in and rebuilt the road because it used to be a wagon trail through here you can still find her meandering through the woods, wow. but you know, yeah. they the flat lines, but, uh, so they push the top of the dirt off to the side and piles. So then there's some fires. I was talking about that. So I like to just get some and throw some dirt in there, and then uh, maybe put a little pot and soil in on top of it and do a little bit of stuff. Yeah. We'll go to town tomorrow about getting a few uh, few amenities, from, maybe some seeds, you know. As long as the aliens keep going and talking to you in Arkansas, they're never going to figure out there's more of us. You know, I've never had that problem. I've saw two yeah. UFOs in my life. Yeah. Where One were you was, when you saw them? Well, uh, driving down uh, Interstate 40 in Oklahoma back about 1970-something. And, uh, yeah, it was a good year, year blimp. We got up close. <laughs> okay, yeah. The number one was down along the Mexican border, and... Uh, uh, believe it or not, it did not involve peyote. <laughs> did not. How do you prove that? <laughs> I saw aliens. That's proof you did peyote. <laughs> Depends on who's listening, Vinny. Come on. That fixture coyote was involved, I'm sure. You can't please the public. They're unpleasable. Yeah. It's in their DNA. Ask them. They will explain it to you in great detail. Can you say uh, defense, detail, and uh, no, what is it? Defeat. Yeah, all in one sentence. I didn't even understand what you said. What? Talk defeat. English, boy. Uh, I said defeated the dog went over defense before detail. <laughs> no, 
I'm going to pass on that. I'm just going to sit here and smoke with my wife and chitter chatter, but I'm not going to pass tests or take direction. Good try, Vince. So, what is going on, you crazy redneck that lives in Arkansas? Oh, uh, all kinds of good stuff. You know how the, when the things are vibrating properly, things seem to fall in place. Hmm. So good, yeah, that's working out pretty good. Oh, well, I figured because you were on the RLM chat, you were screwing around and not working on your project. See, I wasn't yeah, clear I that you had figured out it's, a way around it, yeah. But uh, yeah, I threw all that back uh, some time ago, kind of put it in a pile, and uh, yeah, so that'll be another re retry, go again, Ooh. do it again. Revise, revise, revise. Okay, so now Grimner wants to know if the Chupacabra was driving the UFO. No, it was a uh, it was a surveillance uh, a drone uh, blimp type thing that's tethered in place. Forty percent chance it wasn't peyote then. It, uh, <laughs> it, it, it following along. I was on a gray dog. I was right, yeah, riding along a gray dog across the uh, New Mexico desert. Yeah, uh, down around the other southern regions. Good. Yeah, I'm typing some. I was interacting with the Real Liberty Media crowd while you were chitter chattering there, Vinny. Like you usually do. Only it was You're talking me. to Mr. Duck. No, what? I wasn't doing the duck. I was talking to Mr. Rob. Wait, are you and Rob on bad words again? What's I didn't know. On? I guess I guess he uh, he likes being a duck. <laughs> you in a peacock. Oh, you don't like the ducks. Hey, let me let me show you which would you rather be here. I'll put this little picture. You just look at it. So here's Rob. This is this is what Rob does. Huh. The duck. Okay. Rob That's does what, something to the duck. Right ah, there. you posted something, right? Okay, let's open this up and have a big laugh. Ha 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 ha. ha. Here is me. Oh, hey, that looks pretty bad. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. You kids. You crazy kids on your I don't know funny games. I, I figure he's like eight up. What do you mean? Oh, the, I guess the chicken? I guess and, you know, I said, hey, we boys and shit, you know? What's up? <laughs> what? Well, he don't play. Okay. Well, that's fine with me. Because, you know, there is consequences to your action. Oh. So, yeah. Yeah. So you're going to consequate my action or what? What oh, are you Rob, telling me here, I man? So there he goes. He's lost his privilege. Oh, one of the, uh, are you going to put Rob Works in a timeout? Yeah, like, why you want to be dick? Like you why did you to Hansel? Yeah, sometimes I've done that. Oh, I know you have. In an experiment. But yeah, Rob Works has failed. <laughs> well, this is priceless. <laughs> what kind of idiot does that? I don't know. Wait a minute. Does what? What he's doing? <laughs> What's he doing? Not not agreeing with you or not liking you? Well, I just want to start crap. Well, it's funny when it's Hansel and me for you for some reason. You don't seem to mind God, that at all. God. Each other. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Let's not be hypocritical on an a perfect world, my friend. Tell me where I'm a hypocrite. Because when yeah. it's me and somebody else, you seem to die laughing about it. And when it's you and somebody you else, you're not I, having I such a good time game. all of a sudden. I don't play games. Give I'm me not a punch. Do you like to play the game with Hans? Do you not? Oh, when I do, I do. But when I don't, I eggy his ass, so I don't have to be bothered with it. But oh. sometimes it's priceless, and other times it just reruns and gets old quickly. Just like that right there. Want to try to start crap with me for no reason. Oh, you're well, so sensitive. So I'm a peacock. I make a lot of noise. You do. Ah! Yeah, you do. That's a fucking peacock for your ass, buddy. Wow. All the love in the room tonight yeah. is well, overwhelming me. Good. I tried it. I'm not going to be nice to them. I'm oh. not even going to interact with them. That's it. I gave oh. you no. Okay. You know, you want to play this crap? Oh. You, you know, you're a non-contributor. You drop links in there, and that's it. What it, else you ouch. do? Uh, where you oh, been? What you done? 
Shut up, don't it? You can't even talk to me. I'm <laughs> off. Does it get with. any more perfect than this, Vincent? Yeah. You know, why be you're hurt? yelling at me, and I didn't do nothing to anyone yet. Yeah. It's early. Give me 20 minutes. Yeah. You know what? Uh, oh, uh, smart aleck like that in real life. Yeah. They don't act like that. Well, how many Not times have I tried to make that point on the program with you about this? This particular topic is really, its when it's me involved in it, it's different. <laughs> it's just like you because it's you involved in it, so it's different. So just uh, have fun. Roll with the shit turd thing, you know. Don't just try to dodge them. Quit hitting them with the net. <laughs> Making a mess. Move and out of the way of the shit storm. Don't stand in it. <laughs> and your bot too, buddy. Oh, come on. It can't be that bad. How serious could it be? Why? 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 You know, you want to ask. Ask him. I don't know. For some, he I don't know. Maybe, he, maybe he got drunk and decided he doesn't like you again. I don't know. I'm guessing here. I'm uh, yeah. stretching for an answer. So, you know, yeah, it's... On somebody. Well, our lowest common denominator in communication world is being fucked with by somebody else in type. I don't know why it works as good as it does, but it does. Uh, everybody well, yeah. hates to be slapped in the face with words. Don't do that. <laughs> I do it too. Fuck, I go as far as the Iggy, whoever like you want to deal with them. Iggy, it's not it. like I don't have any contribution. It's not like I'm a ain't done nothing, you know. Oh, you're gonna. Oh, come on, don't, right. don't. So, put, you want know, to, nah. you want to disrespect me for no reason? Then That's yeah, right. go ahead, go on. You're really? be done, be done. You're done. Okay, but when it's when it's your boy that you bring into the room that's got the shitty attitude, I'm going to remind you this for the rest. This is it, Benny. The rest of your life. I'm your conscience now, Jimmy well, Cricket. You have the same choice I do. You don't have to engage with him. You <laughs> very easily. Maybe he's having fun watching you spin. I that said, could be the point so that he would do what you're doing. Easily. <laughs> He's, I have fun with it. Don't worry about it. Bob's going to be dreaming. It's going to wow. dreams. Well, in my opinion, personally, when something pisses me off that much, boy, I better be sitting pretty close to it. Otherwise, it's a temporary problem. It goes away as soon as the thing goes away. But if you're sitting next to whoever, then you can't be acting all the fool like you can on the Internet. That's right, because he's a mute now. That's well, what yeah, okay. Do don't that. don't go into bully mode. Of a coward ah, and a here we go. Absolutely, the definition of, a, of the the attributes and the characteristics of a bully and a coward. That's what a bully is: is a coward. Yeah, I've got to have somebody to kick or spit and that sort of thing. Playing in the playground, well. Yeah. Uh, hey, buddy. Yeah. Super Vinny, you're dealing with here. <laughs> See how ridiculous this is. <laughs> it just gets fucking worse the more you try to explain it. <laughs> Super <laughs> Vinny in the damn playground. Yeah, that's good. You got your x ray vision and your cape I can and everything. fly, baby. I can fly. Wow. I'm going to fly here in a little Cause, bit. Cause, yeah, you were threatening that earlier. Anyway, but <laughs> so I think he choked and fell off just oh. a little bit. I was that was poorly timed on my end. Give me another second. <coughs> I'm gonna cough for him. How he's going? <coughs> he's gonna there cough he. for me, sir. Hey, I know. Uh, we, me and Vinny, uh, we we share the 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 heartache and the the success of the in a perfect world program <laughs> it's and, perfect again for me well you, you know you're making I, me smoke I, early tonight with your i early, took the high ground and you, you know i tried to smooth it over yeah. It, it, yeah. You know, you know, yeah. he's a jerk and all that i give another chance i never antagonized him not once well, and he wanted to play and he built up to it see 
like a little coward. Maybe. How much? Wow. They, just like being in prison. I'm going to tell you what. Let somebody drop a little back in front of your house out there and not stop it at that point right there. You know, I'm going to tell you what, where it ends up at. And I've seen it happen in there. Uh, you know, that this, I ain't never one to one to put up with bullies. I used to beat up bullies. Um, you're a little worm boy. Wormy. Wormy. I think you probably got worms anyways. <laughs> 420 uh, somewhere celebrate. Well, I've done my share of complaining on these here radio podcasts I, over the time I've done it. So continue with your <laughs> stuff. I'm pretty much done. Are you sure? It. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, it's 20 after now, so light up and calm down. You're you're making me perspire. Yes. You got me all uh, worried about what might happen. Oh, God, 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 God. You know, it's like, uh, hey, uh, Tennessee here yesterday. Uh, or Sunday. No, it might have been yesterday. He drops in. Uh, Mike, he's in here. Salt Lake City Mike. He knows Dan. He knows uh, Primer Time uh, Michael. You know, the guy, he's a, a goon. I imagine, because he's a real big guy, too. But he's a goon in a county. Getting up on you and like, yeah. mash you up in the wall and that sort of thing. Ooh. And then, Fun then, people. Uh, yeah, yeah. That sort of thing. He's got, you know, little worms like Rob. I don't imagine he's a big man. Uh-oh. Here we go. <laughs> no, right. so no. has nothing to do with UCY about... Uh, Rob here. I didn't even know him till I come over here. Mm. You know, he, that's right, right. I don't know. Maybe he got a ego problem or something. Has him frustrated. I don't know what his problem is. Well, now you have an imaginary friend too, Vincent. Enjoy. Who's that? Who? Let's see which out of the two of us. Let's see which one of us has his invisible friend drive him batshit crazy. I'll bet it's you. <laughs> well, I I'll bet it. you go batshit crazy over your invisible friend way before I do. <laughs> I, 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 I try to give him another chance, but, you know, he's damning. Nah, he, he's, he's got a yeah. sarcastic side. You can't take what Rob says to heart. He, Rob I'm not says listening. crazy shit to me all the freaking time. No, uh, you can take it how you like. I made my choice. See, that's what I mean. You make your choice with people you chatter with. And whatever they write, you read it and hear it and think it however you fucking want to. It got nothing to do with me. I can't tell you what Rob's writing. Only you can prevent for... I mean, only you can decipher that code. <laughs> I always know who SLC is in there. Sock Puppet told him to leave his nick alone. I've got uh, probably a couple hundred nicks. So now he wants to know what Nick. Well, I'm glad we got people telling us what to do and how to act. That's, you know. Oh, I that's, I do everything I'm told to do, and only a few things I'm told not to. Well, I call it compromise. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well, yeah. I even tell Sir no occasionally on little detaily shit, but not very often. Just it uh, depends on the time of day. If you ask me before noon, you're always going to get a no. <laughs> what about passive aggressively? If you if I ask no. you that, would I get a different answer? I don't know. What's your goal? What are you trying to accomplish? Uh, no, I'm just using the example. Uh, hey, I got to uh, go. All right. I, hey, sorry about uh, getting mad there. Yeah, but, well, uh, enjoy. It's all, all right. about that. So are you gone for the show or what? Yeah, I'm gone. Bye-bye. Right, later. See ya. Thanks for... Showing up tonight, Vinny, and kicking the In a Perfect World podcast off with a nice clean shot to the nuts. <laughs> it's apparently, uh, <clears throat> Rob Sarcasm got old Vincent in a twist. Okay, well, I see that that way, but Vinny and, I don't know, me and Vinny are worlds apart in some of the most bizarre areas. The only thing we agree on, I think, is whatever we're doing, we're doing it wrong. And freedom? What? No, nobody's free. They, they like to be free. They like to think they want to be free. But when you start using voting and 
society to be free, then you're you're not free. That's the opposite of free. That's where I settled down and said, you know what? Hmm, I suppose I could do it like this. <laughs> but uh, how do you explain that? Um, life just, I don't have an average, normal, average, everyday kind of life. My decision-making belief system is a little bit different. and I've taken a lot of chances in life other people wouldn't take. Then I saw certain opportunities as traps, and I didn't want to do that. So here I am. Ta-da! And <laughs> Vinny, Vinny and Rob, they're so damn similar. It, it's like I was watching this guy talk about magnetism. One of my uh, I, one of the characters I tripped over on YouTube, and he uses some kind of Greek or freaking weird name. And he's ink stained. He's bald. He's got freaking holes in his ears. Uh, he's got to be a, a 350 pound guy, huge man, but he knows his shit when he talks. He seems pretty intelligent. He's a little bit full of himself because, well. In my experience, looking on to intelligent people, when they really are intelligent, well, they tend to be full of themselves. And, oh, I'm smart, and I know this, and I know that. And every once in a while, the people that pitch that kind of fastball game, I think they're telling the truth. It doesn't happen every uh, every day or any of that, but when it does happen, I usually can maybe not parrot and repeat the crap that the other guy is saying but listening to other people opens up ideas that I have and they're trying to connect to something and they say it this way and my brain thinks it another way but it's very similar and it kind of means the same thing so oh, I don't know I I guess I wouldn't recommend him to people or I would have posted links on the, on the RLM like Crazy Jerry over at BitChute. Yeah, I'll repost his links. That guy, I don't know. He's a necessary part of the game, in my opinion. But it's very interesting to see how deeply he's involved in this on a personal level. Where talking to other people about it is more or less incidental. But he wants to. <laughs> I don't think I'm helping anybody out in the you know the world. They're not going to hear my crazy stuff and change their mind. What I'm doing is, if they think this kind of crazy stuff, they're going to go, oh, yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> Big deal. But at least you're not completely all by yourself in your individual way of looking at the exterior. So I think we're all supposed to... We're expected to see it and do everything all alike, like we're all a bunch of freaking clones of each other. There's no individual anymore. And if, if you're going to go with individual by, uh, oh, you've got more ink or, oh, you got more piercings, I don't mean that kind of individual. I mean the thinking individual, the kind that says enough is enough at some point. Because the older I get, the more I think about stuff like, well, my mortality. Then I got Cirque telling me she's going to squeeze 25 more years out of me. And, well, I'm walking around like, um, I don't know, like maybe I did 20 years ago. And I wasn't in, uh, in pr before I had my hernias explode. But before that, I was feeling physically about the same way I do now. And this is... Uh, good 15 years later a little more than that maybe and boom anything can happen but <laughs> uh i'm not one of those folks that wants to bet against myself you know again i'm gonna get a life insurance policy so that when i get hit by lightning on thursday the 14th my wife will get a fortune right honey I don't know. That's how I see that insurance stuff. Betting uh, against yourself. Like car insurance. Wow, why would... If it wasn't mandated by the freaking state, who the hell would want to buy it? 
you're betting that you're going to get out there and be either such a piss, piss poor driver you're going to fuck somebody else up or you're so unlucky that some dumbass that can't drive is going to find you. <laughs> so. <coughs> so let's gamble on this and we'll call it insurance. And then I've heard horror stories about how insurance companies try to find ways not to pay off because the people that are collecting might be acting in a fraudulent fashion. Well, isn't it something how once upon a time people's word was worth something? <laughs> and now, geez, everybody's so full of shit they don't trust their own mama. You go, Mom, are you telling me the truth? <laughs> well, I didn't abort you, did I? <laughs> oh, yeah, but that... In my day, that would have been a lot. It would have been an unfriendly topic to bring up in in a my mother's birthing period of time. That came many years later, and now you've got forty years of having these uh, politicians and doctors and lawyers pound this insane crap into us that till it's normal. And everybody's doing it. Don't you worry. Don't you fret. Well, I'm not convinced. But, I don't know. What What would you be able to make of this shit? Just looking on it. You know, in, write, in, in its writing, it's one way. And then in my physical life, I wander around and I see people and I do this and I do that. And it's not the same damn world. And I'm not talking about from Denmark to Scotland to the States. I'm talking about the one I read about and the one I live. They're never on the same page. <laughs> That's, they're not. I mean, it would be like trying to tell a stranger in America about my life right now with you. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay, sport. Yeah, you're you're married to a Danish woman. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. You got a dog. Oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> because I think this is how I see people nowadays. So your first instinct is to doubt. We're not supposed to trust each other at all. Not even a little bit. You're supposed to trust is the government and uh and the banking system and the electric company, all those people that supply you with all the shit you need. I wonder if they got, don't have a room they sit at and try to figure out ways to terrify us so that we'll continue to use the second-rate shit we collectively use. Oh, and I've seen links and people's opinions and such on the Real Liberty Media about Ten years from now, electric cars are going to be a, a thing, a common thing. Well, you know what? Ten years from now is a long time the fuck away, and I'm going to be 70. So, if I don't want to drive a car now, I don't think ten years from now is going to make me want to drive a car any more than I do at this point. Because you know, there's other ways to... I don't need a car. No, no, no. It's all, I'm done with those things. I drove enough over my lifetime without having a, a problem to feel that a problem is in the it's in the numbers if I continue to drive. Bad drivers are there <laughs> everywhere. One will find you if you expose yourself to them enough. And I'm retiring from the driving thing. I hope my legs hold out. I'll tell you that because I sure like to walk. I think, uh, yeah, if I had a choice between walking and a car, I'd choose walking. <laughs> Grimner. <laughs> oh, no, but it's a, Hannah's part of the, she's part of the marriage. Me and Cert got Hannah when she was a puppy. And the cat took right to her. She, I mean, the cat allowed her to stay right from the very beginning. So <laughs> it's kind of like I had had to take Hannah up the street to go get her a dog product this afternoon. So, yeah, you know, it's part of my life. So kind of is like being married to the dog in a weird way. Because if I don't take care of the dog, then she's going to not be, you know, well. She 
not fed, not watered, not walk, and all that shit that I do with her. So, eh. But Cirque, <laughs> she, she's got ideas. I got to give her that. Smart girl. Don't talk about me on the radio, she says. I don't know anything about Trump. Do you know Trump, Cirque? What is he like? <laughs> My wife is having a giggle at me now because I was chatting about her for some reason. But, you know, life, the double standard. It's all right for me to do it, but it ain't all right for you to do it. Wonder where all these... Li and the, I feel that's what happened with Vinny and, and Rob is I read sarcasm, Rob's being a smart ass. Vinny's being sensitive and not giving you know, Rob a break, see where he's going to go with it, just took the first road i do that too but uh, only with one person i'm not that fussy only a little fussy i think <laughs> uh-oh my my flick it doesn't want a cricket <laughs> all right we'll try that one more time take two ah here we go now so what do we got going on in the chat? Me and Vinny just destroyed in a perfect world tonight. But I suppose that is one. It's a hell of a topic, though, when you think about it. So let's try to do that and make the make a show out of not getting along with people on the Internet and why. Why is it important for us to even think that we're getting along with each other in the first damn place? And half of this stuff between... Uh, interactions between whoever is usually disagreements or mine is better than yours like you know the schoolyard shit not a lot of uh, content to life anymore and, oh anyway I was going off about they're uh, they're giving all this energy oh electricity and all this that and the other <coughs> and I'll never be impressed with anything until they just say, well, we lied about hemp. We can make thousands of products out of hemp. Let's make an automobile out of hemp. Why don't we make the automobile out of hemp and we'll make it so it runs on hemp too. And all the byproducts of this incredible journey into the future would take a lot of money. People are going to go, well, who's going to do all the investing? Blah, blah, blah. All this crap. But then in the meantime, we've had people show you that you can convert your car and run it on water. But the guy that did it made a video and then he vanished quickly after the video. And however they did it, I guess it's a secret now or the government owns it. So... The point I'm trying to make is anything that would be cheap and uh, good for us, clean, and not create a horrible waste so that we'll live like Rob and Vinny or me and Hans, always at each other's throat, always not pleased with the other guy. That's where we're supposed to be. That's society in a nutshell. But... Then there's other, you know, there's other times. It's not, not all negative. It's probably about 50-50. It's like balanced, that balanced thing I like with my dog. You know, the difference between me and Hannah by ourself and me and Hannah around other people is when she's alone with me, she's more calm. And when there's other people around, she gets excited and she wants to be more like a puppy-ish. So... And it's whoever too. I mean, if I take her to the um, to the store to get cigarettes, she does. She is a people dog. She wants to smell everybody and p get petted, and then she wants to smell the other dogs. But we're at the vet today, and this woman brings this little dog, and, and I almost understood what she said. She was asking me if Hannah was male or female, and she asked it in Danish, but I. I guess I've been around the vets enough to know what that meant or something. And I said, female. And Well, the little dog, she had some male, and he wanted to sniff her butt and all that. But, wow, here we are 
we can't even get along in a chat room. I don't think that people are ready to start sniffing each other's butts yet. <laughs> Would that be evolving or devolving, though? Hmm. Let us ponder. Yeah. I mean, it would take a lot. I'd have to really like somebody to smell their butt. Can you imagine that? You know, how insane that would look to somebody. But you, how could you fight somebody while they're smelling your butt? You know, what are you going to do? <laughs> Try not to have an excursion. I, I, Vinny killed me tonight with this. I, I was not prepared to sit and dwell on why we get along so badly as a collective what what are the reasons behind it you know social is it money is it are we all a bunch of lunatics after all and we're all equally as insane as the next crazy fucker out there <laughs> but he doesn't know that see that's the way it is for all of us <laughs> we're all looking out thinking wow they're all nuts and everybody else is doing the same exact thing, looking out. <laughs> wow. Oh, they're all crazy. Well, except for her. She's only a little bit crazy. I think I want to talk to her for a minute. What? Well, that's how reality seems to me. Might not be that way to you. Maybe you've got a better reality or more fun reality. Uh, what would people consider a fun a fun reality to me is an adventure where you travel to some exotic freaking place you never even fucking heard of before. <laughs> well, you, I heard of it, but I, I never had any intention of coming here. So I never studied up on it, never thought nothing of it. All I know to this day is what I've learned since I've been here, and that's pretty much not much. Just another country in my mind, but the people are nice. I give them. I'll, I'll give them that. I got tongue twisted in my compliment because we had such a negative show. Uh, let me let's parrot some idiots. You know that usually brings rain. Cirque was watching before I'm doing the radio tonight. It was so irritating. Cirque is watching Alex. Well, not watching the link, but. Uh, she's got Alex Jones in a, in the Danish newspaper here over uh, arguing in a restaurant, yelling at people. What would it say? Belittling? In, yeah, yelling at people in a restaurant. Wow. <laughs> so I suppose we're all doing the same damn thing the same damn way. So we're probably doing something wrong. That. That's my first thought. Not, not Trump's wrong and Obama's wrong. No, no, no. Got nothing to do with Trump or Obama. What's wrong is the design of the game that we're playing. <laughs> Trying to explain that to other people because it's so fucked up in so many different areas. And you can fix a handful of the things that are broken, but it won't interrupt the game. The game will still continue. And it, we don't get any support to do anything collectively to stop anything. And I'm going to say it one more time. Ten million people would just not buy Coke for one day. That normally go on, out in public and buy it. But that one day, stop. Don't do it. I'll bet you they're freaking, the stock would fall the next day. You think it would hit the stock market at that level, sir? Think You think so? Maybe, maybe not. She, I got a thumbs up, sure, from my wife because she doesn't know m nothing about the stock exchange. Neither do I. I'm just no. I just know. I don't want any part of whatever that is. And I play. I would blame that on the details of things like trading the freaking uh, prison system. They, they use it in uh, stock exchanges a for profit business. So you have people in jail making people outside of jail money because they're in jail. Wow. How did how did we ever get into a position like that with the government? Yeah. Freedom. Oh, rights. Oh, I remember. 
remember a bunch of towel heads took down the Twin Towers with, you know, magic beans or something. And the next thing you know, we don't have any rights in America no more. Go, what? What happened? Uh, I don't know. We was invaded by terrorists. Now we have to give up our freedom. And over the years, slowly, they whittled at it, too. They wrote it down in one big block. And then they started to chip at it over years. I went through about ten years of it. So, looking back on it, it's, it's easy now to see the chipping. When I was in the chipping away situation I was in, I don't think I noticed it. I don't think I cared any more then than I do now. It was just... Uh, my living conditions were a little different. I wasn't married. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't bound to anything I didn't want to be bound to. Now, I got myself into a thing, and it's not so simple. But, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of funny, and it's it's a very serious thing, but it's so amusing how the state takes any info interest in my relationship with Cirque one way or the other. I don't fucking know. But apparently something to do with state means that the people in politics have a right to your personal business. And I that just rocks my ass. Rocks me here, it rock me at home. I'll never change from that. I'll always be against these intrusive, nosy fucking money changers that you know, want to control your fucking movement so that they can make money off you. Now, the nice thing about the prison system here is it's not so punishing. It's I've, from what I've seen and what I've heard people tell me about it. Uh, know a guy downtown. He's working at the the place I drink at. He's done time. So hmm. the stories from here. And the stories from home about the same amount of time were two different worlds. Like Vinny was, he did short time, I think. This other guy did seven years, but he did it in Denmark. So apparently, it's not as punishing, but still, he learned his lesson, so to speak. He doesn't do those things anymore. He's put it behind him. Now, why would that work in one society, but not work in another society hmm. maybe it does maybe it would work if they would apply it but i think the i think what they apply is force and the expectation of you're gonna comply you know what the fuck kind of shit is that anyway i don't remember learning that stuff in school i mean they still as much of a you know pledge allegiance bullshit place as it was they still didn't try to stop you from being an individual, you know. And there were a few, um, a few teachers in the f the younger when I was like eight, nine, and ten, that they actually did stuff that the teachers after them came and went. They didn't do that. Whatever it was, it worked for about three years, and then it stopped working. So, what changed? Couldn't be the system. It must have been me. Because whenever the system was set up for my next step, I was never, I was never at the right place mentally at the right time to um, be interested in what they wanted me to do. <laughs> I think is what it was. I think I was trying to just ignore them as best I could and just do as little as I had to do to keep them quiet. And that probably wasn't the best approach to take if you're looking to be successful in life and all that kind of thing. But what? I don't know. It's like Vinny and Rob. You know, they see the same damn thing the same damn way, but their expression of it is day and night. Go figure. And th this is my opinion of looking on to them. Other people are going to see different things, and it's going to mean this to you and that to her and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I think it's the design of the damn game. I don't think it's the players. You know, we're all trapped in something. Let's see. Grimner's got the NWO hates individualism. 
Yeah, they sure do. Mm. And then the very thing, it's kind of strange because being in a group in a weird way, I guess there's a personal individual part of the group kind of thing to it. It's got to be something to explain it. I mean, these people just don't get hypnotized by some kind of brainwave they can't explain is there and follow this other moron to fucking hell. No, no, no. It's got to be more complicated than that. <laughs> you know, if you don't follow the guy in front of you, well, <laughs> what's the guy behind you supposed to do? Thank for himself, for fuck's sake? We're in a goddamn line here, people. <laughs> So, I'm not really sure where I was going with that. Probably just the idea of how confusing something so simple as being an individual or getting along with other people in type in this new modern age texting world that we're all playing in. Because the competition levels, are they that didn't ever change. That's still the same. And it, but it comes out to my mind when I read it from other folks in different ways interesting yet i'm not gonna go jump off the roof because Vinny and rob aren't getting along i think i'm gonna add insult to injury with Vinny and just enjoy the fact that rob's got the better of him over something he wrote on a screen that could have been just sarcasm from rob having a little fun because rob's like that so, oh, now Cirque wants to be a, hijack the show and say, my wife started it. Probably did, too. She's an instigator. You guys, you see, you know, <laughs> she married me, people. <laughs> she, she knows what she's doing. So, anyhow, we still, we've got Vinny and Rob at odds. And we got me and Hanselectomy at odds. And I don't know. I've been bored of Hans the last couple of days. I don't think I even said, uh, called him anything. Maybe adult the other day, yesterday. Nah, today I didn't spend any time with him. I'm going to wait until I miss my invisible friend, and then I'm going to un-iggy him again. And please the Real Liberty Media with our bantering chat. <laughs> I don't know. I can't stand 10, 15 minutes of bantering with Hansel, but... I guess if it makes you guys laugh, it's worth doing it. But outside of that, the reruns, I'll tell you, if you ever want to hear a good joke from Graham Z, she, would, she was on the July 18th of, ni of 2017 Dork Table program. And right about the, f I might have it out of memory now, but somewhere around 45 minutes maybe. Well, anyway, it was in the last half of the show, probably, and she was uh, telling a little joke about a mutual invisible friend of ours, and I I just recommend that particular show. It wasn't uh, well recorded, but the the content was pretty good. Me and Mary had a lot of fun doing dork tables back then. That woman will make me laugh and not even pay attention to me when I talk. So it's very interesting at the old day dork table podcast. Anyway, so scooting on. Let's see. Well, my wife wants to take credit for instigating the Rob. No, now she's saying no. Wait a minute. Oh, you're not. What are you taking? Leave you out. <laughs> Women, aren't they sneaky? Very slippery of you, Clarice. Anyway, so <laughs> I'm still stuck on this Robin. Robin Vincent. Yeah, be, that's easy for you to say. You're not the one sitting here reading. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, what a night! And besides, Vinny came and he did a hit and run tonight because uh, he had yeah he had something to do. He was a man of a thousand places. Maybe he's feeling cooped up in his little Arkansas. He needs it the road again. He's getting squirrely. Well, when people are uncomfortable about something, that's usually when they act out. 
but mm, maybe not. Maybe we've hit new territory in this e uh, this e world thing, this uh, typing thing. Maybe there's something to there's more to it than we know what we're seeing. You know, like what's this? This is all uh, delivered to us on. Is this digital Grimner? The delivery of the uh, the screen that we see and what we're visually looking at with our naked eye, or in my case, my four eyes. But when you catch up on that, let me know because it's the, what I'm interested in that for is I read that the speed of uh, of the digital is so fast the eye can't even do it. It's actually quicker than the human eye. So why would you need that technology? Yeah, and I I don't know. It's not probably important, but something about it bugs me. I can't see very good, so I depend on my four eyes. And then when you think about stuff like that, and I've read books about eye vision and blah, 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 blah. And the book says that your eye actually sees things upside down, and then it blah, 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 and it magically turns it this way, and then, then wow. This is strange how we, how we live. And... Uh, that brings me a memory of going to the eye doctor and I didn't know about these eye drops. They dilate your eyes. I had no idea what it meant. I didn't know yes, no, or maybe. And the doctor did it before there was, boom, I have drops in my eyes. What's that? I'm dilating your eyes. Okay. And then for like two hours, it's blur. You can't see. You're pretty much blind until the goop wears off or whatever it's trying to do gets done but the funny part about it was it struck me as odd you have to destroy something so it could get repaired I, I didn't understand what the point of making me you know temporarily blinded for two hours to fix something was could that be just one more you know Rockefeller medicine trap you know, because the basic idea behind what somebody does should give the person that it's happening to some kind of comfort, not be leaving them uh, upset and, and uncomfortable about it. You want, you know, but whenever I go into situations like that, I'm never comfortable. So I finally learned to stay the hell away from the doctors. No, thank you. Now, well. I guess I could be risking my butt out there with those people driving 25 miles an hour in those little tiny cars. But I doubt it. And I say that because I got my foot run over once back in the 80s. I was, <laughs> I was a little out of pocket one day walking around a car and I didn't look left before I stepped into the street in the car. And I just got be right be underneath his back wheel just before his wheel rolled over my foot. So, hmm. And then it was a matter of, let's see, do I want to be a nasty prick and fuck this guy's life up? Because I'm not sure if I looked left or not. I don't think I did. So if I'm going to be like that about it, I didn't want to bring him a lot of shit. And all that that it was, it sprained my foot, and the hospital said you'd have probably been quicker to heal if you'd broke it instead of spraining it and i had this big old thing i had to walk in my to protect it and all this crap it crutches it was horrible until i got my you know my uh sea legs back and i could walk but that taught i guess see these little things in life along the way that have taught me to appreciate certain things more than other things because when i couldn't walk it was so inconvenient to live the the life that I'm used to live in, I have these crutches and this thing on my leg, and I still had obligations and things I could do, so I did those things with or you know without the leg. It didn't matter; these things had to get done. Wow. So, anyway, as I've aged, I still remember the how that felt, and do not want to encourage that into my life. So I do weird shit like walk a lot. <laughs> what else do I do? 
Oh, I try to do a little bit of the food stuff because the wife likes to cook organic and makes good food, vegetables, and knows how to make kind of unique things that I don't know how to explain it. This is Danish, her Danish version of something I, I think of or something I suggest. And then the next thing you know, we're making a whole new food program for the neighborhood, right? Well, the the house, the neighborhood, <laughs> me and you and Anna and the doctor. But, see, this is it, my boring, oh, Vinny. I wish Vinny would have not done what he did tonight. It really <laughs> threw my timing off. But, you know, hey, it's like watching that Kill Bill episode. You know, you got to watch the whole, once you get started on Kill Bill, as bad as some of that stuff is, you just can't not watch to find out where they're going to go with the story. And that's how I kind of, I guess that's how I feel about my partner, Vinny. Because uh, me and Vinny go back a few years, not too many years, but uh, enough to where I, I know, I know Vinny as well as I know Rob. Maybe better than I know Rob. And I'm a little disappointed that Vinny can't take a, a crack. Maybe I have to toughen him up a little bit. Because sometimes he gets a little word, uh, hmm. what's the right way to put that? He gets stuck on a certain concept of a word or an idea. I do the same thing. I'm just using this on Vinny because he dumped me on the show tonight and started all this crap anyway. It's all his fault. Now, let's see. What time is it? Is it over? It's 8 o'clock. Now, that's 1. I was looking at the clock to see what time it was. Well, yeah, so I talk like that. What about it? I didn't know what because I'm still not used to this. Um, 20, It's that's 8 o'clock. Yeah, well, I had to figure out what time I'm looking at. I, I came from the reading the, the 5, 10, 15, 25 clock, you know, 30, 35, blah, blah, blah. The one that went uh, every five minutes. And now they're, I've heard that uh, they don't use them anymore because the kids can't read them. Children are not being taught how to use a standard clock that I grew up with, that everybody grew up with before me for a long time. So it kind of made me wonder, you know, maybe this time thing is just a load of shit. <laughs> it's a nice way to keep track of your slaves, though. And make sure your accounting is in order. But outside of it, it's just got a numerical value. I don't see anything magical about time. Time comes, time goes. I'm still here after all this. Well, except Salt Lake City, uh, Mike says I'm off balance. Or I might have said that. Yeah, I probably am. Most of the time, it's uh, it's like 50-50. Not most of the time, about half and half. I'm off, I'm on, off, on. Just like everybody else, nobody in my life that I've ever experienced has ever been perfect. Being a uh, being human being, uh, being a carbon-based life form is a lot of work. You know, to do it right where the time that you're experiencing has got a value to it. It's not just some, like Rob and Vinny were arguing, ah, that wasn't, that didn't have a value. I was trying to make a program out of it, and it's a, such a hard subject to even discuss. People not getting along with each other over words. But then again, that's pretty much what we have. Okay, we got a bunch of words. So what? What were? What is it we're doing wrong? If we're getting bad results, I would consider that to be a bad result because he was mad. <coughs> he was raising his voice. And he and he left. Now he said he he said that he was going to, but he left angry. And I've had Vinny mad before. I've had Vinny's had me mad at him before, but I've talked to him about it. And I think maybe that is the difference between uh, the the. Hmm. The results are different between the typing and the hearing and the verbal, you know, hearing it in your ear, verbally spoken, 
spoken aloud, however, there, whatever way makes sense to you about how that's done, hearing it and reading it are different. And it's the same thing in a lot of ways, but wow, talk about interpretation. Go figure. I don't know. Maybe this one just got me out of nowhere because I really didn't give it too much consideration before, but I know I've thought about it, but right now it just was real clear how if like um, Vinny was going on about well in person blah 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 yeah in person because in person when uh, Rob gives you a smart ass remark you you looking at him you can see he's being a smart ass but when you're sitting reading it in a chat room and other people are reading it I think it puts the way we read these things in a different light that might be what's going on. I'm going to blame Rob's addiction to sarcasm as the culprit in the Rob and Vinny saga. See, you guys will be a case history. You know? Someday, people will sit back and they'll go, Hey, I wonder what's in this box. And they'll open it up and it'll be a, a internet thing with a show on it. <laughs> and like, hey, well, look at this. Well, anyway, I said it all fucked up, but I know what I was thinking. <laughs> I just couldn't say it. See? Wow, doing this radio thing. It's not as easy as it should be, I think, is what I'm looking for. Because I like to tell the stories, and I like to make the comparisons, and I enjoy making a point out of something I think matters. But... I like to make a fucking joke, too, and have a giggle. You know, life ain't all work, and it's not all play. There's a little bit of both. Ah, there's what, maybe, maybe Vinny's a little stressed out on the work thing. Maybe he needs a day off. <laughs> Can't go out and hunt some raccoons, or what do, what do Arkansas people hunt this time of year? Anything? I don't think it's legal to hunt deer anywhere or is it is they outlaw that yet i don't know i heard that deer lady call up and <laughs> on the internet and ask them why they keep putting those signs where the deer cross <laughs> should put them somewhere else so those deer won't cross over the highway <laughs> and yeah i thought it was a joke but apparently it wasn't. She called back and had didn't understand and realized she had made the, you know, mistake of a lifetime on a radio program. Where it may her shit makes this shit look intelligent. <laughs> it was bad. But she had a good sense of humor about it. And I'm hoping that the people on the RLM, you know, whatever kind of crap they're, they got to think about what they're saying. Because if it's that important to you that you're going to get angry and even be mad on the radio about it, wow. Because I'm mad about stuff, but I don't think I'm yelling about, I like, I, you know what? You guys ain't going to believe this. I don't like Monsanto. I don't like Israel. I don't like America, Denmark, France. That list is huge. Uh, I don't like any of these things. You know, but the people in the things, those those were all right. I got friends in places that, in fact, went down to the bar yesterday. And I wasn't planning, for one, I wasn't planning to stay very long. And two, oddly enough, I wasn't planning to spend any money. So, what ends up happening is, this guy wants to get drunk and keep buying everybody beers one after the other. I had, I was building a wall in front of me because I he was drinking three to my one and buying every time he bought a beer. <laughs> so, it took me a little while to finish that, let me tell you. And then when I got home, it was hmm, a little bit too much. So, I, I decided yesterday I'm going to take a few weeks and I have to find a better strategy than to make a plan like that and it works. I didn't see I didn't think it through far enough to know 
when to leave. And I wanted to leave earlier than I did. <laughs> I didn't. I made it out in time to hit the grocery store before it closed and all the important things. But, you know, that's when I'm not comfortable doing something. Sometimes I don't know it till after I do it. Not as I'm doing it. Later on, I think it through and go, hmm, that doesn't seem to be such a bright idea now. <laughs> so I'm going to reevaluate, take April off. Ah, see? And April will come and go just like everything before it has. And when I make a, a time thing, uh, I had to do that with the lemon seeds. Ah, friend of Cirque's gave us some new seeds to play with. And I saw a video, and I liked the way, and I got about, I don't know, maybe two dozen, maybe 20 total. So I took five to give this experiment a shot and see if I can't get a, a sprout out of the seeds according to this video link I watched. Because there's different ways to accomplish the same thing. Depends on, on your uh, what your goal is in the long run. Sometimes there's a better way to start a plant, blah, blah, blah. I like this idea, so I'm going to try it. And so far, the things that we've been brought to, well, my green leafy tree is having a, a little color change in some spots, but not others. Very strange. See, I don't know enough about each plant and all that. I just do it kind of as I go, and it's been staying kind of nice around it. We've had a lot of... New plants in the windows like an old couple should. Right, honey? I got the affirmative from the boss over there while she's crocheting. Uh, anyway, yeah, still stuck on this crap about why we don't get along as well as we could. And what would be the results of it anyway? Most of the knowledge that we've collected, you know, the group, the people, the bodies in the RLM, for example. Most of the knowledge, you can't apply it to anything. So it's, I think it's a frustrating thing sometimes to uh, have this information that we have and watch it get slapped around by the public so badly. You know, and they fall for the same crap so they can go and take some country's oil away from them, but it's a war because they're socialist or... What is this? It's usually something like that. They're living under a dictator. Blah, 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 blah. Well, guess what you're living under? <laughs> if your leader's doing that, well, what do you think you are? So, yeah, I know. But, I guess I escaped the, uh, I don't know, what do you, what'd you call it? The responsibility of being a an invader <laughs> but I physically I invaded I guess because I'm physically here but the difference between an invasion and what I'm doing I didn't bring my uh, I didn't bring my flag with me I did I honey well I got one that's made in China and it's like a, a bandana it's got a parody of an American flag and it and it says right there made in China. It just cracks me up. But I didn't bring a big one to put out in front of the, the house so the neighbors could be pissed off at me. Because their flag wavers here, they they would frown on another country's flag of flying in their sky. I'm positive of that. Very uh Denmarkian here, whatever that would be. Danish, I think it is. Denmarkian? Huh? No, I wouldn't want to even think of it. The Danes would be insulted. Or this is their home. See, my wife says, no, you would never want to do that. And I know because they fly the Danish flags in the neighborhood at certain times of the holidays. Certain holidays will get this particular flag. And then another holiday will get a different version of the same flag. <laughs> it's very, uh, very American in that respect. Same thing. They love their flag. I think there's a little difference. I think that invading other countries kind of slowed down to a minimum here. Denmark is not an aggressive warmonger. Now, you guys might not be ready to hear this. Are you sitting down? Okay. America is known throughout the world 
for its bad-tempered attacks on weaker targets. Don't fool yourself. You're not out there saving any fucking buddy. If you were, you wouldn't have to ask questions like, where are all the free people at? For people that have been at war since I was born, where's the free people? Everybody's on video cameras and those that aren't on video cameras that got cameras in their phones and they're taking pictures of you taking pictures of somebody taking pictures. So, there's so much going on. How, who who are the bean counters that are supposed to be responsible for keeping track of all this shit? That This is what they tell us. When we're watching everything you do and you're this and you're that and the other. Okay, well, why? What's behind that? What would the advantage be of knowing your stock? Huh? Huh? Maybe you can make more profits on the stock market, know how to invest in certain states. I think it was like Oregon. The prison system sued the state because they weren't keeping the prison full with prisoners. So, what did the state have to do? Reevaluate their punishment schedule to please a private uh, business. Huh. Now, that's kind of scary to me. I don't know about the rest of you out there in La La Land and other places, but when a government takes that kind of uh, control over its population, and then all the Gun laws that have been coming up. This red flag crap. These things are huge. And what's that other thing? That Jewish thing. I got the link somewhere. I should have it memorized. I think it's called the Noahide laws. These Jewish laws. We're so beyond screwed. It's terrible. What the government's doing behind everybody's back is worse than what we're watching. Uh, let me see if I, if I saved it here or not. No, I can't remember the damn name of it. Well, got it here somewhere, but it's about the Jewish laws that are coming to um, seats of decision, I would say around the world, but they're going to make a big hoopla of it in America because, you know, the land of the free and all like that. And what's going to happen is not only will we as people not be allowed to insult the Jew and be anti-Semite, but you won't be able to ask questions about the Jew because asking questions would be behaving as an anti-Semite. So, hmm. And these things are in the works. They're trying to get it through legally so they can bully us even further. Wow. I'm a little disappointed, but, eh, that's just me. And I'm still, you know, not, I'm not convinced that this Jew thing is what we've been pitched it is. I believe it's something different. And they're using these words, names, and ideas to keep us baffled so we'll continue to buy the bullshit. There's a whole lot of people that still think this Palestine thing is, uh, that's a noble cause. The Jews are fighting terrorists. Not, the Jews are the terrorists, <laughs> funded by fucking banks. This wasn't a long, hundred-year range plan to get right where they're at now. They, they've been moving pieces around for a hundred years to get us to where we are today. And to break off of it. I'm not so sure people are ready for what that would entail. I don't think it'll happen. And I still think six months tops. And that would depend on where you lived. Because people are creative little... You know, we're creative. And when we get together and we try to fix a problem, it's easier to fix a problem with other people than trying to do it by yourself. Okay. Now, we all know that crap, so I went further with it and said, well, how did the problem get get to be what it is? 
well, it had to start somewhere. And it, my road led me every time to somebody told a fucking lie to get this to become what it is. Every time. Doesn't matter what it is. If you go to the revolution, somebody lied to somebody to get a fight going on. I mean, I've read stories that tell you the the Boston Tea Party wasn't ex exactly uh, explained the way that it happened. <laughs> Some parts are similar, but the more of it that you read, the more of it, the more you read of it, the closer you get to making a, an informed decision for yourself about what you read. And wow, but what we're told, the way we're taught shit and what we're told is so confining. It's like doubting that the globe is a globe or whatever. We're on a round thing. Well, okay. I don't know. And because I don't know, even my wife, she kind of rolls her eyes. Well, why, can, why don't you know? Did you miss that day in school, honey? Um, and I don't, you know, it's like, like with Rob and, and Vince. But with Cirque, I don't mind that she doesn't understand or see or believe what I see or understand or believe. It's more like, okay, it's your business what you think. So when you interact with somebody else and you're looking for hmm, uh, middle ground, I guess it's easier to find it because it's all in your head any damn way. They're, you know, they're words. We're interpreting them however we want to based on perceptions of other people's behavior i oh man this gets really see it's too easy to be this complicated that's what i think because i get through life with so little uh friction hell i even when i bump into people it's not a big deal it, you know just me not looking where i'm going and moving in the grocery store or something turn around too fast something like that but not uh never mistaken for any kind of act of aggression you know like sure if i was in america i'd be some kind of hey this guy's attacking me he looked right at me in the face with his four eyes i'm scared call a cop and that might be a little bit of a exaggeration on my end but when you read the chat in chat rooms I'm not going to pick on just one. This is universal. It goes on all the freaking time. And it's because, I think, we're all told a bunch of crap. You know, why not just one thing that was true and start with that. And I'm going to go with cannabis and hemp as a one thing because they're related cousins. And you don't want to split the family up. I mean... Even though hemp is cannabis' ugly cousin that nobody really wants to date, it's a good move to make. Trust me. Because <laughs> cannabis flowers are so, you know, purple and red and green and all the colors of the damn rainbow. They got people that really go out of their way to grow some exotic looking flowers. I've seen the strains on the internet and I'm impressed with the. Uh, the idea behind it, but I'm not paying big money to smoke something that's going to put me to sleep in two tokes. That's not my game. No, no, no. I'll just do what I do, whatever that is. Ah, and I'll quote Voltaire. Uh-oh. No, it didn't come up yet. Miss Kate was doing a quote. Hey, Miss Kate, whatever happened tonight, I don't know. Me and Vinny got off to a bad start, and I, then he split. And I could not get my my mind right <laughs> and do a in a perfect world all by myself because it's in a perfect world. I don't think I'm by myself in a perfect world. Maybe that's what that is for me. You think that's possible, sweetie? Eh, eh. She said sure. She's not. You don't sure. You're not sure. <laughs> She's not. Nobody knows. I don't think anybody knows anything. I think we guess a lot of stuff, or maybe we'll agree with stuff, but what is knowing something mean? And then the topics that we talk about that we know, we're such experts at, 
politics. We know so much about religion. We know so much about history. And then the then you find out that the book that you read that shit that you remember from was a bunch of nonsense. No, come on. Yep. Conned. We was scammed. Now, I'm not so sure I, I'm not upset that I was lied to. I think that could be the core of my problem right now. <laughs> you know. Well, that's not to say that, no, yeah, it is to say the truth would always be better, no matter what, and that is what we can't seem to find a way to explain to each other in a fashion that's not individual, because everybody's going to hear that, and they're going to make their own way. You know? There is no joining a group. It's It's not about that. I don't know what it's about exactly, but I'm getting, you know, I'm scratching the glass. And for a minute here and there, I think I see what this is about for me. And I try to tell you guys, because the stories are incredible. I mean, five or ten years from now, I'm going to have Vinny and Rob stories to tell, because there's five years of Vinny and Rob to go through to get where I'm going to be in five years. And those two have been keeping me in stitches for, I can't remember, However long, I guess they've known each other, but, uh, <laughs> I, 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 can't we all just get along? <laughs> the answer is no, not supposed to. I think that's the balance is you're going to find people disagreeable that acting out on it part. That's the thing that's not necessary. Yeah, we could all not do that, but it's a lot of fun to do it. It's fun to get mad and be angry. Accept it. It's just how far are you willing to take that? It, You know, it's like a bad habit. You can really be playful with it. And then other times, watch what you say. Because you can really say something being a smartass that you can't unsay. <laughs> uh, oh, that's okay, Miss Kate. You didn't miss much. Oh, thanks. Yeah, Vinny and... Yeah, I know. But, see, that's why I do the radio, though. To explore the dark side of my fellows, you know. My peers in the electronic world. The ones that I speak to on top of everything else. Because I know them better, you know. It's, uh, the difference between type and, and hearing is just incredible. So maybe that... Maybe that Rob and Vinny need to chat private and work it out or not one way or the other and get it over with Meh, that's what i had to do with vinny i would recommend it he's reasonable when you talk to him now if what we're seeing was just you being sarcastic i think yeah talk to him and work this out he's poor guy yeah and grimner found it noah hyde law number two a code of conduct to which everyone is held accountable, but nobody is expected to understand in the first place, which is furthermore created by the same class of people who charge an arm and a... Uh-oh. It died. Where does it continue? Ah, I got lost. Well, there we go. Keyword. Well, too much, too much typing on the Internet for me right now, but I was... Just going back to that, that's what I was trying to... Noahide law. This stuff is dangerous. These religious fanatics in power and all their kings and their freaking families of wealth and all this stuff is insane. I don't know what the appeal to... to eh, I go on and on. I don't see the appeal to all that. Nah, 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 nah. Well, I, but sadly, I don't. I, I do get a kick out of shit like... Uh, there's this big kid that lives down the road, and he uh, he takes his son into town on his little scooter, and he you know he's like a year and a half old. He's not quite two, I would guess, by looking at him. And his dad, you know, he's working with him, and he's a big kid too. So every time I see him and his boy, I say, hey. and little see the little nicety things that when you you get older you get to appreciate this shit instead of it's not in my way anymore because i'm not going anywhere 
Now I see things and I can go, oh, well, that's kind of cool. <laughs> so, you know, in some ways I'm getting kind of mellow and, and, and uh, now I don't think I'm getting more aggravated. My older, uh, the older I get, the less aggravation I get. I'm trying to turn the tables on that aggro thing. Spend enough time being mad. Then watching Vinny do it. Eh. But my problem is I can't always keep the balancing question, the balancing idea in the top of my mind. When somebody pisses me off, I usually go right for the nuts. Eh, let's spark. Okay, let's get nasty. And yeah, then I go when yesterday, I think, or maybe the day before, eh, I don't want to start arguing. So I'm just iggy this shit, just not bother with it at all. Because words on a screen, because people have these deep-rooted ideas. I'm talking about me, we, okay? I've been in this game for 59 years. I have seen a lot of things. And I'm telling you, this, my opinion about this electric car thing is, it's no different. It's the same trap. You're not free of nothing. You'll find out the hard way. And if it takes 10 years for your investment to pay off, that should show you I'm right. 10 years from now, you won't need a car. But that's my version of my future, not my version of your future. Um, I'd like to see the world get right with the hemp thing and just fix stuff. We have all the fucking technology at our fingertips. These idiots are making robots. And here we have hemp. And they're making fucking robots. <laughs> yeah, they're they're pitching electric cars instead of hemp mobiles. Bumper to bumper hemp, fueled hemp, all of it. Clean environment. I mean, the whole thing, the package is so attractive. But it would take so much to change over. How do you know that? Where's all the information? What it would take to change over? I mean, if you can build a refinery that pumps fucking shit into the air, and then you can build a refinery that doesn't, what difference does it make for the cost of this building if it makes a difference? <laughs> it shouldn't matter fucking cost. Five dollars. Build the fucking thing. <laughs> Who cares? But we're, we're not in that life. We're in the waste, profit, imprison, control, punish, hurt. All the negative shit. That's that's what the modern day mind does. Build a wall. Keep those fucking people out of here, out of our utopia. <laughs> Where are we going to go? They're moving them all over here. Help, 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 help. <sighs> well... I still wonder why nobody else notices it's the government that is bringing them there to do the things they do. They do what they do through the government. How, you try doing something through the government without the government's permission and see what happens. So, no. That <laughs> Could we be getting conned one more time? <laughs> or are there like 30 million illegal aliens Living in America. Give me a minute. I wonder. I wonder how many illegal aliens there are living in Denmark. Probably like nine, maybe 20. Somewhere between nine and 20. <laughs> wow. I don't know. Maybe I just haven't seen enough. But uh, I met a guy named Hans at the bar. <laughs> and... <laughs> This guy was a, he knew what I was talking about. His English was pretty good. He was fair. Uh, he had a real Danish accent, and he was talking about Jutland. Uh, it's uh, across the little bit of water here. It's uh, on the mainland. I guess this is like an island. It's hard to explain what this is, where we're at. Anyway, but he was talking about his uh, his part of the of the country, where he lives, where he's from. But he's over here. He's got family and relations and whatnot. We were chitter-chattering for a while. I had to leave. It was strange. But I met a man named Hans, and he was not insane. I was completely in shock. 
Because, you know, when somebody asks somebody their name and they tell you and they say, Hans, <laughs> I was everything I could do not to laugh. It was, wait, wait a minute. No, this isn't the Internet. This is real life here. And, of course, only in my life would something like that happen <laughs> where it would be amusing, you know, for whatever reason. But here I am, American in a Danish bar, and I meet a guy named Hans, and me and Hans see eye to eye on politics and the world at large and all the crazy shit going on in it. But who knows? Maybe we're wrong. Maybe everything is working exactly the way it's supposed to, right on schedule. We just think it's all by mistake. Hmm? Could that could that possibly... <laughs> I brought that up before. I think that's very true that we've just played our part in the, into this society game. I don't even know what to call this. What, it's like a chess game. like But it never ends. There's no winning in it. There's just a lot of playing. You get to move. You get to do this. You get to attack that. And you get to threaten this. And But you'll never in this chess game come down to just the king <laughs> you'll, you'll never meet the king you'll never threaten the king you'll never see the king they might show you people on TV like Donald Trump you know the president or uh, what's her name Angela Merkel of Germany or what was that other sleazy that queen of England from England they might show you these people right but what does that mean I saw some pictures of people, and they told me who these people were. And they ride around in the streets, so that must be it. And I think, maybe there's more to this. It can't be that simple that you're just born into this family, so all of a sudden, every everything that you see is all yours. <laughs> oh, th these people are all your subjects, and... They look up your skirt and see if they can catch a peek of your cha-cha and such. But I don't know. That's how we were raised with the president shit. We had Kennedy when I started. Went, no, we just lost Kennedy. I was like, just coming up on, I must have turned three. But it was uh, not in my daily life, the president. But when he was, it was Nixon. So, because <laughs> somehow or another, I don't know. If I remember the Kennedy thing, and then nothing, and then the next thing I know, Johnson was, I don't know, bye. And then all of a sudden, we had this guy, Tricky Dicky. <laughs> the greasy, slimy Tricky Dicky of Whittier, California. And that man was... So dis, such a liar. They even pretended they didn't live in Whittier. They said they were uh, from Yorba Linda, but Yorba Linda was very. No, I don't even think it was anybody lived in Yorba Linda when Nixon was born. <laughs> so very. Anyway, might be true, but it's not likely. I think he was from Whittier too. Now, according to the stuff that I've seen on the internet, he's actually related to King George of England <laughs> by blood. <laughs> so, yeah, even Tricky Dick, he was, he was born into this better class of people, you know, the ones that, uh, that can take seats of decision and take us to the right places and uh, make life so wonderful. Just like a fucking utopia, wouldn't you say? And it would be so easy to s to set this thing straight, and we can't do it. <laughs> you can't do it, because to do it the way I want to do this, well, first you got to admit you lied. That would be the opening door right there. You know, it, when somebody is accused of a crime by somebody else, and that person later on says, okay, we, we lied, that really wasn't a crime. We made it a crime, and, well, it really wasn't ever a crime. We just told you it was, and took you away, and locked you up, and took your shit, and that's the end of it. 
<laughs> uh, they got new studies indicate. Look at the wonders of cannabis. <laughs> Levi Strauss is making <laughs> hemp cotton pants. Well, cotton, but hemp instead of cotton pants. So, and I still just see this stuff as a slap in the face compared to what if they could do this. If Levi can do it, and these other people can do it. Why can't everybody just do it? What what could actually be holding us up? Well, let's see. Let's ponder this equation. We're $21 trillion in debt at the moment. So, like, say it would take, oh, I don't know, $4 trillion more to unfuck this whole thing. Would that be worth the investment? And then who are you going to owe it to? By the time everything got unfucked, those people would not be in power anymore. The whole way they got us is they got us through the resources. They control them. And they're using the worst shit there is to feed and fuel us, to water us, you know, because we're good cattle. We'll take any shit they'll give us as a collective. Nobody moves anymore. Nobody does shit. They just complain on the internet once in a while. Oh, the cops shot somebody for driving without a license. Mm. Poor guy. You know, there, there's your uproar. Oh, well, poor guy. He's dead. Now what? Don't let it happen to you. Well, how, how do you not let something like that happen to you? <laughs> it's a, the whole thing is insane. There's there's no telling that uh, driving without a license is punishable by being shot to death. But yeah, apparently, because it didn't get the world's attention, nobody gave a shit. And then the, not only that, but there's ten times worse done to everybody else on a daily basis in other ways. I don't know, maybe the getting shot and getting out of the game is the lucky one. And the people that have to look at life like a struggle and a fight. Ooh, oh, he's got to fight and win. and da, da, da. Maybe that's their punishment. Yeah, instead of being let go, they, they got to stay here and fight. <laughs> I can't to the, you know, now I look back and I can't see who or what they're fighting. It's all illusion to me. And I played the game enough to know that it's real if you play it. And if you don't, then then it's not real. But the players that do play it, they don't care. There's not like a... It's not like a union. They take victims. They don't give a fuck who you are. If you're on their bit of dirt, whatever bit of dirt that is... You got some thugs somewhere with guns, and they're gonna go, "Hey, look at this! This fella here's not obiding by our law. We're gonna have to under arrest him and take him to the judge." And then there's a few people in the RLM that know from experience what the police are really like as opposed to what they show us on TV and movies. You know, all those all those young girls in court with a dress slid up the half up to her butt and she's laying over that table talking to the judge. No, are you out of your fucking mind? You've never been to court then because that's not court. That's television. Court is boring and strict and confining there's a presence to this void. That's what my wife calls that. I'm going to steal that word from Circle and use it on the In a Perfect World podcast. She calls it the void. Yeah, and it, cause it, just a, it never stops feeding. It feeds off everything. There you go. And it just sucks it all in. So staying away from the void. How? And especially if you don't even know it exists, because here we are in this life where everybody knows everything, and we can prove this, and we can prove that, but I keep finding that the things that they can't explain are way more interesting than, than, than the things that they can explain. In fact, I believe that the things that 
do get explained are mostly nonsense and bullshit. A lot of fancy words and some idiot with a PhD after his name. But the the story, no. You can't prove the story, but you can't disprove the story either. So, whoa, what are you going to do? Make up your own mind and risk the crowd. Ooh, the crowd will not like my answer. They'll think I'm strange. Because I don't think we're on a globe. Me. I don't know what we're on, but I don't think that the stories and all the explanations to tell me how this... Nah. Even if it is true, we're so complicated in ourself, you know, just the body of a human life form, a carbon-based living human being, <laughs> whatever you fucking call us now. It's just so disappointing. But whatever we are, if we can't explain us, why are we so concerned about explaining everything out there? <laughs> I mean, I'd be more interested in understanding why the system that I grew up in told me fluoride was good for my teeth. That was not very true. That was very misleading. And an even uh, tried to whitewash that later with, there's different levels of fluoridation and fluoride, blah, blah, blah. Well, there are. But the type that they were using <laughs> turned out to be not very nice stuff. I wouldn't want to drink a glass of it. Yeah. But, you know, when you put a politician on the camera and you ask him to drink a glass of his own sludge, they won't do it. They'd say, no, what do you think, I'm insane? <laughs> Vote for me, I'll take care of you. So here we are. Years and years and years, punishment after punishment, still tolerating the same game because it's the only game there is. And I've offered the answer, and I know it makes people laugh, so I like to say it because the three steps will, they're guaranteed to work, and I guarantee they work because I use them. If I didn't use them, how could I possibly tell you, hey, you should try this. This works really good. And you go, how? Uh, hmm. I don't know how to explain how this works. I only know that it does work from doing it. And it, the more honest you are with your hmm, with yourself, I think it's more about that. Not... Uh, honey, did these pants make me look fat? Nonsense. I mean, the things in life that matter. You know, am I a slave in some way to a entity I can't put my hands on? Or am I dreaming? <laughs> no, anyway, there you go. Because some people find uh, life is drudgery and uh, what is it? Uh, service. I've heard so many people complain in life about it all. But I always thought life was just life. Uh, shit happens. Some, sometimes it's good stuff. Sometimes it's not so good stuff. Sometimes something that looks bad is actually not bad. It's just not what you wanted it to be at that time. So Maybe that opinion uh, on looking on how things are or are not helps me. Maybe it doesn't. I could be, I'm so prejudiced in my, my own way of thinking. Crying out loud, I don't think anybody's not. How else do you succeed at anything without being bound to your ideas? You know, Some of this stuff that we do as a collective, it's not bad. Most of it, that is more like the results of the actions are the problem. Not the actions in their self. Because you have to drink water. There's no way around that. You, you're bound to that. Without it, we can't survive. Well, that right there should let you understand that the people that are supplying it to you are doing terrible things. Terrible, terrible things. And I think they're kind of laughed off, and we make jokes about, oh, you're retarded, you drank all the fluoride water. Uh, uh, uh. Well, what I think happened is it dulls 
it dulls a part of our brain that uh, we probably need and we don't have it and not having it makes the rest of this possible if you had a clear head and you could clearly think and see the world around you as a collective you wouldn't put up with this crap not for 10 minutes I mean, not if people really understood the difference between oil and, and hemp is the filth that oil creates and the filth that hemp does not create, no matter how you use it. But $20 trillion in debt, and they st see, I, the, you go back to that every freaking time. It's all about money. No, it's not. It's, we're told this. We, as a collective, we could do so much. There's billionaires on this planet, billions of dollars they'll never spend in a lifetime. But they won't invest in humanity as a whole because then we'd all be the same and be a bunch of communists. Oh, here we go with that nonsense. <laughs> I like the anarchist scum thinking. That one does me just fine. And the basic foundation to that is as simple as do no harm. What else? <laughs> treat people the way that uh, you want. You treat them the way you want them to treat you back. And it doesn't translate in chat rooms. The typing is never going to be the same. We're, we're getting shortchanged in our exchanges because of the way that we read the other fellow's type. So... I don't know if it made any difference to any of you out there or not, because I don't like to see Vinny and Rob um, getting uh, getting Vinny all hot, now, you know, because Vinny's an emotional character, and I think Rob's just a sarcastic guy, and he didn't really mean anything any more than usual. He just said it the you know what was interpreted as the wrong time. So thanks everybody for playing along with me while I lost my freaking mind on in a perfect world tonight uh could not stay focused don't know what happened it was a train wreck but what do we got tonight is Tuesday so Wednesday night on a seven o'clock on the east coast pm is Miss Mary and the rocket chair podcast. And then Thursday I do uh, at eight, uh, two o'clock on the East Coast, uh, eight o'clock my time, is twenty percent off. And then uh, Friday, Vinny's doing some pro some podcasts, some old stuff to get it on something I don't know, but it's old shows he did. Since he he did a lot of shows. There's a lot of stuff to hear. Uh, that should be one o'clock on the East Coast. Noon Central Time, because <laughs> he likes to say that. And then we got Grammy at 7 on the East Coast, 7 p.m. Flying through on a rocket chair before Grimner and Moose Girl kick off the Freakers Ball at 11 on the East Coast. Grimner, I think. Oh, I get I get a little too high sometimes. I can't remember the times. Saturday, I do the Dork Table at noon Eastern. Sunday, we have uh, Blues in the Morning, Trivia, and then we go into the uh, Hal Anthony comes in with Behind the Woodshed. 3 o'clock on the East Coast in the p.m. on Sunday. And then Monday night, you got Grimner coming in with 7 p.m. on the East Coast. He's still doing the Grim Leftovers at the same time. And he was having a struggle with his card and his upgrade. And he, I don't know if he got what he wanted or not. He, he was very confusing to me about it. I don't know why. Just It was hard to understand if you're happy with your stuff or if you're tolerating what you got because there's no other choice. It, yeah. But go over to Grim Leftovers for the... <laughs> for <laughs> the grim leftovers and then uh next then what's this monday and then tuesday next tuesday maybe me and Vinny, maybe me by myself i have never got any idea what we're gonna do on a uh in a perfect world podcast that's for sure <clears throat> yeah see miss kate well we should have the classic channel that's a good idea you got all that airtime. 
and we've done all of us we've done so many shows some of the stuff if people wanted to make you could do like comedy records off some of the dark tables i did with mary that woman had me laughing like a 12 year old i was insane anyway so I, I guess I will just wrap it all up here in a pretty big bow, you know. And, ah, I hear my cat crying in the background. Anyway, so thanks a lot, everybody. I give, give me a few minutes to get my. I usually get my notes to you pretty quick, but give me a, a few extra minutes. I'm gonna deal with my cat and other stuff. So thanks everybody. Thanks to Grim for putting us out there. <laughs> this is the train wreck of train wreck shows in a perfect world. So, see you all. Let me get my window open so I can close it. And we'll see you all later.